If you're looking for the campaign that will encourage as many app downloads as possible, then Google Ads has a very specific campaign subtype that you should use, and that is app installs. Pretty straightforward. So in this video, we will cover the basics of this subtype. First, we will go over the placements on where app ads could appear. Then we will walk through the app install campaign setup so you get a better understanding of which assets are going to be needed before you can launch. And then we will cover some basics of conversion tracking. I'm not going to go over the full app conversion tracking setup. There really is no universal option and each account may use a different tool. So we will show you at least a few resources where you can go and get the proper direction on where you need to go to set up app conversion tracking for your account. This Pay Media Pros video is sponsored by Optio, the smarter, more efficient way to manage Google Ads. Optio's platform operates as a second pair of eyes on your accounts, regularly monitoring performance trends to make data-driven optimization suggestions for keyword strategies, bid optimizations, ad copy creation, and more. Better yet, you can save time by implementing their suggested changes directly in their user-friendly interface. Optio is extending their free trial period for Pay Media Pros viewers for 60 days, meaning you get two full months of testing and using Optio on your accounts before you pay a dime. If you're interested in giving it a shot, click the link on the screen right now or in the video description to get started. Before we go through an app install campaign setup, I want to talk about where your app install ads could appear because we don't get to control where they appear. And the first one is going to be Google search. Now, depending on what the user searches, Google can show an app ad if your app or app category is related to the user search term. You're definitely going to see these if someone actually puts app within their search term. Now, one of the methods Google ads says that they use to relate your app to a search term is using Google play search term history that have led people to find your app on Google play. So it might be a little bit more relevant than you were thinking. Now, after Google search, your ads could also show up on search partners. I always use the same example, but it's ask.com, formerly Ask Jeeves. They are part of the Google search network. And that's just one example of many, many, many sites out there that actually use Google search to power their own search engine. But the same rules apply for search partners. One thing that was already mentioned was Google Play. So besides search results on google.com, Google Play search results will also be a placement. Now there are also other features on Google Play, like you may also like this app, or Google Play also has suggestion features of other apps that you would like. Yes, there are organic options there too, but with app install ads, your ad could also show on detail pages, search results, or anything where there's an app that is similar to yours. Next is YouTube. You'll see within the actual campaign setup that we will include a video. There will be certain texts, images that'll be used. And as Google expands placements on YouTube, whether it's an in-stream ad or an in-feed ad, users can have the option to install the ad directly from the YouTube app, or it could be linked to the Play Store. Next is going to be the Google Display Network. And historically, other placements that have been included in the Display Network have been Gmail, which then moved to Discovery, which is now rolling into Performance Max, other apps, which is still part of the Display Network. So within those three, Display Network, Gmail, and other apps, Users can have the option to see the app name, the text that we will add within the campaign, images, videos, because those are options on both Gmail as well as display network sites, as well as a link to go and download the app. And then the last one is going to be Google Discover. Not to be confused with Discovery campaigns, Discover lives on Google Search, and this is only available for Android phones using the English language setting. So you may have started to see this more on search where there's more image focus type ads when you're scrolling on Google search. And you may have already noticed that some of those visual rich ads could be app install ads. Let's actually go into Google ads and start building a campaign. I'm on the main overview page, but whether you're on this screen or within campaigns, find the new campaign button. Of course, we want new campaign. And as always, we have to choose a campaign objective. But in this case, we have an easy selection. We want to choose app promotion. Now you still can select some app objectives when you create a campaign without a goals guidance, but for this video, I'm gonna stick with the app promotion objective. Of course, app is gonna be the main campaign type, but there we see three campaign subtypes. It's in the video title. I said I was gonna talk about app install campaigns. Maybe we'll get to these other two subtypes in the future, but they are limited in certain ways. App installs is just the one that we've run into the most of what clients wanna to use to promote their app, so I'm gonna stick with app installs. And also for the sake of this video and just time, I'm only gonna run through one campaign setup and just with Google and Android, that relationship, I'm gonna select Android. There's just 
more features, more placements with Android. So that makes things easier. But whichever one you choose, you will be able to look up the app by its name. To me, it's easy enough to just search it. But if you have the Play Store URL or the Apple App Store URL, it's easy enough just to paste it in here. So let me go grab a link, paste an option in there. Surprise, surprise, that's the one I choose. Go ahead, name your campaign, and then you can continue. After your app is selected, you can go ahead and choose your location. You can see in the warning in the blue box, you can target any of the locations that are available within Google Ads. However, your ads will only show in the countries where people can actually download the app. Makes sense. It will save you some money. And as always, there's your advanced location targeting options. Next, go ahead, choose your languages, and then more settings that are available for app install campaigns. You can select a start and end date if you're trying to be a little bit proactive or attach a data feed. Not as common for this campaign type, so I'm gonna click next. Here, we can enter in our daily budget. Notice that it doesn't give us the option for lifetime. And then you see that there is a focus option. Now, since I'm using an app that I do not own, don't have any analytics, anything, it's gonna to default to install volume. If you're looking to get as many app downloads as possible, it makes it easy. There are other options for in-app actions, but that is not the subtype that we have selected when we're creating the install campaign. So it's asking, how do we want to track install volume? Well, with the Android and Google Play relationship, they can automatically track those installs for you. iOS, it's going to be completely different. If you use other third-party tracking tools, you can link them to Google Ads. Then they will start to show up here within this dropdown, but I don't have any other options with how I'm working on this demo. But then you can look at what kind of users do you want to target for this campaign. Again, restricted a little bit with the subtype we have selected. We're going to focus on all users, people who haven't downloaded the app yet. If you want to, you can set a cost per install. It's an optional feature. And then if you're wondering about the actual bid strategy, it tells you right in the green box. Max conversions is the only option. The name is in the campaign subtype, app installs. That is the focus. So of course, that should be what we want to track. And of course, we want to maximize that action as much as possible. So I don't really understand any potential complaints here. That being said, let's click next. Note the option to attach a product feed. Doesn't really apply to this specific app. But if you do fall within that space, that will be an option for you. Unfortunately, I won't be able to do anything here. But the rest will look pretty familiar if you run any responsive search or display ad features. We can add up to five headlines, 30 characters each. We can add up to five descriptions, 90 characters each. We can choose a variety of images, 20 maximum. We can add up to 20 videos and then up to 20 HTML5 images as well. So certain things already that you see that Google is going to pull besides my other assets that I'm going to add, we see the app name, the app logo, we see ratings, the number of downloads, it's calling out that it's free. There's some images that are pulling from the app. Those can also be seen on the app page in Google Play. But let me go ahead, add some text portions, add some images, add some videos, so then we can walk through what this ad could look like on a variety of the placements that we talked about in the beginning of this video. Okay, my ad is just gonna have to be average. I didn't wanna spend so much time researching different text options. Let's keep moving. But we do have the preview right now paused on display. This is one we actually already saw. There's another option, but just going through, we can start to see that's taking a little bit of the images that I provided just to give it something a little bit different. I'm not gonna run through all of these. Let's go to search. There we see some of our headlines and descriptions. This is taking from exactly from what I have entered in. Remember, this will include search partners as well and it's pretty much the same. Google says it's not gonna show us all the formats, but from the search, it's pretty limited. From what we can see, it's just changing up my headlines and descriptions. For YouTube, it's already yelling at me because I don't have a portrait video. If there's the video, learn more links will send me to the Google Play Store in this case, because it is Android, or if they're on the YouTube mobile app, they can install it directly from the video. That was looking at a in-stream action. Now here's in-feed going to be related to the content that we're targeting. Someone else is watching a video, let's say a different Star Wars video. If we wanted to, based on the related content, here's a recommended almost in-feed style app where they can download there. You may have noticed just on the main YouTube home screen when you're scrolling, definitely was part of more of the discovery ad format, more search in-feed placements on YouTube. And that's just some of the YouTube options. Again, not going to go over all of them. Here we see Discover. If you were unfamiliar with what I meant with Discover, keep in mind this is on Google search as users are scrolling. So you may have seen more ads like this appear on the main search feed and then Google Play. Simple text ads there. I mentioned the related app section when we were going over the slides and then back to the beginning. So if you have 
everything in there, all your image assets. If I click on advanced options, you can add a deep link. If you're not familiar, it says it right there, adding an additional page after they install, but you really don't need too many assets to get going. Most likely you have this already. So you can click next, review everything, make sure it looks good. You can always go back and click on none of the options, but if there are any errors, it'll be highlighted in red. Google will let you know, but double check everything and then you can publish the campaign. Now within the new interface, this is the first app campaign that we have created. So when you're looking at filters, we now have this app campaigns category. But then when you're looking at your columns, go ahead and modify your columns. And I know they've already been added to this particular view, but besides all your main performance metrics, you see there's a variety of install options that we can select. And then there are some several in-app action columns that you could set up as well, assuming that you have this set up within the analytics side and all those other sort of actions. But I'm gonna cancel out because they were already there. I know I'm in the ad group view. You can view this at the campaign level as well, but then here is where we can track installs. I know I mentioned in the intro that we weren't gonna cover conversion tracking, that is a whole can of worms, but I did want to cover a resource where if you're having trouble with conversion tracking for your app campaigns or any in-app actions that you want to start recording, you at least have a starting place where we can go and try to find help. So feel free to go to your goals, go up to conversions and look at overall summary. Scrolling down a little bit, there we see automatically, since I created the campaign, Google has created a conversion action specifically for this app. If I click on it, here, it'll give me the details where I can update these conversion actions. And if I click on edit settings, I'll be able to change the conversion windows. Here you may have noticed it's last click. We're focused on downloads here. So, so pretty much we need to know that last click action. If I go back. Now in other cases, I understand it may not be easy. If you're looking at a new action, you need to track certain other actions. I know it's just app installs, but what if your app has purchases and all those other in-app actions that we can review as columns as well? Here's where it gets a little tricky and then you're gonna have to import them. If you already have this set up through Google Play, there's your option right there. If you're using third-party app analytics, again, that's a whole nother animal. GA4 does capture a lot of actions for you, but here within this learn more section, you're gonna get more resources on where to go with links that'll send you out for specific reporting actions, as well as how to set up conversion tracking with Firebase, your third-party app analytics, or Google Play. Since we're gonna get a variety of people watching this video, it's easier for you to go off and find whichever source you need to use to start tracking your app conversions. For our clients who have run app campaigns, no doubt Android has been our best performer using these. For any iOS campaigns, we really do start off with Apple search ads first, maximize the budget and exposure there before coming and doing iOS campaigns in either Google ads or Facebook. And even though we only did an Android version here, we've seen success with iOS as well. And GA4 has made things easier to track. But just understand, it'll tell you in a few of these documents that with all the changes that Apple is doing, iOS conversion tracking is gonna be more difficult. So you just may have to watch Lyft internally with iOS to get a more accurate feel on if these campaigns are making a difference and are you seeing the overall app growth that you want. But that is how basic an app install campaign is and how quick it is to set up. Hopefully you get a better understanding of where your app ads can appear. And when you review the preview, you may get a better understanding of what assets will work the best and different ways that you can come up with new app ads. I only created the one ad group within this campaign, but potentially you want to test out several ad groups to see maybe a theme of your creative or the theme of the text that you're using to really test out impact of not only engagement, but of course the main goal, app installs. If you have other tips that you want to share with the paid media community, on successes or maybe even losses that you've seen within app install campaigns, let everyone know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.